Welcome. It's April 14th, 2020. My name is Joe Weston, and we're here for our weekly Tuesday event of our global community for lasting peace. And it's really just a, it's a joy and a pleasure to have to see familiar faces and to see new faces. If you're here for the first time, it might be nice to maybe in the chat or later to let us know where you're, what part of the world you're from. Uh, it's always great to welcome new people and to see familiar faces. And it's a, it's a, I look forward to these sessions because it feels that we're, for me, it feels like we're creating a real heart community. And when I say uh, that this practice is helping us, people around the world who believe in values of lasting peace and, 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 and respect and um, equity for all, uh, an opportunity for all, and respect for the planet and the environment and respect for one another and respect for ourselves, um, that we can gather and together, um, what I always say is weave a golden thread of lasting peace throughout the planet. Many of you have your own practices and you have your own systems and beliefs and it's always nice to hear what you have to share um, as we both share with each other, support one another, and at the same time practice together to, as I always say, in a sense, if that's our purpose and that feels important to us to be of service in a, in a perhaps a new way or a, more, or a way where our scope of influence can be increased. And the way we do that is by increasing the capacity of, in our hearts to, to feel empathy and connection with not just ourselves and those that are close to us, but what if we can do that for seven and a half billion human beings? And let's not even go into the trillions and trillions of other beings on the planet. Let's just start with that small fraction of the human family. So to have that capacity in our hearts is what, what I call fierce compassion and to have and to cultivate a level of resilience that is, that is uh, meeting our current time. And um, I want to just share a little bit about, so what we'll do is we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll share some thoughts and some things to think about as a motiv motivation for our practice. I'll lead you in the practice and then afterwards we'll have a time to reflect. And uh, well, the first thing I want to do is I have a request. I, I, I'm always, as you know, I'm always trying to think of small ways to, to, to be of service and to be of support, to create connection in these times when we can't physically connect. How can we be creative and skillful? And, and just in our hearts, just when we wake up, wake up in the morning thinking, who might need a little support today? And that doesn't have to be proven statistically or with data. It could just be a, your own, trusting your own intuition and your own wisdom in your heart to be able to say, whether, I, whether it's true or not, I'm gonna reach out to this person. And you never know how that can change their day or their, their week. And, and I don't know about you, but what I'm finding is that by the end of the week, I come up with a strategy of how to manage all of that's happening in the world and take care of myself. I wake up at the beginning of the new week and there are new stressors that are thrown our way. And all those strategies that I finally developed from last week don't work anymore. <laughs> and I have to come up with new strategies it's a great practice. It's, 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 it's mind blowing and it's very frustrating. And sometimes I'm, I navigate it better than others, but it also, this is part of our practice of this idea of being resilient and resilience really is presence and, and, and awareness being in this present moment. And for those of you who know the respectful confrontation methodology, the four pillars of resilient power, which are grounding, focus, strength, and flexibility, that when you can have an equal mastery of all four of those, that you are operating with your optimal power. You're tapping into an internal and external power sources, um, which can support you and energize you and fill you up so that you can be more of service in, 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 in challenging times. And you can use those pillars in equal mastery to, to navigate challenges and to step into your power and to speak your truth and to actually manifest all the things that you've been dreaming to manifest to have the impact on the planet that you would like to have. So um, what I'm finding, for those of you who have worked with me and understand the, that, that, that methodology, is I'm finding that right now what this time is asking us is a deeper level of grounding and a deeper level of flexibility, that the grounding is keeping us on the ground so we don't spin out. It's also 
the grounding brings us into the present moment because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. We can't hold on to the past. We can't go back to the past. We've already discussed that. So the grounding exercises and, and the awareness is what helps you be in that and help you stay um, present in this moment. Uh, and the uh, and the flexibility is the second because it's a moment to moment adapting to what's happening. And the more skilled we are in flexibility, the less difficult that becomes. It becomes effortless. So with a deeper level of grounding and flexibility, we can stay in our balance and flow with all of the challenges. Anyway, so you know that I, I'm always thinking of ways of, of, of being of support and service. And, and what I'm concerned about right now in this country, in the United States, is the threat on our postal ser service system. Um, and they are working so hard to make sure we get our mail and that there's a lot of concerns around whether they'll be able to stay solvent. And so I made a note that I'm going to post and put in the, um, in my, my mailbox. And my request is that maybe you do the same. And what it says is, dear postal worker, thank you for all the work you are doing. I greatly appreciate it. Wishing you and your loved ones well. So try it. If you don't have a post-it, use a piece of paper. I'm sure you have a pen somewhere. That's all it takes, a, a, maybe a piece of tape. So just try that. It's gotta, it's gotta support some way. And if nothing else, it's we're, in what we're cultivating as a community, this is how we can be of service in these small ways. Because this is what lasting peace is. We're not the ones, at least I don't think I'm the one who's gonna go and sit down with governments and write treaties and negotiate treaties. I'd like to, because I got a lot to say. But until that moment, um, the blueprint for a 21st century peace movement, for a, a lasting peace, is moment to moment choosing into making choices of service and of being kind and of cleaning up your mess, as I've said, and checking your own um, yourself and how you see things. So that's, that's something I just want to share. I want to share one more story about what's the what when i talk about this idea of increasing our capacity for for fierce compassion what that means is it's not just empathizing with people it's not having sympathy for people it's, it's empathizing is the first step it's what brings us into compassion in action the con spontaneous um spontaneous not even to think about it compulsion or or instinct or impulse to go into action from compassion. And I want to tell a quick story that, that, uh, of how the different degrees of that. I remember I was doing a training in the Netherlands when I was living there in Amsterdam um, many, many, many years ago. And the studio we were working in was also around residential houses, uh, apartments. And we're in the training and I heard a, a young child crying, like really hard. It wasn't like fake tears, like I want an ice cream. It was really hard tears. And the child kept crying. And I was noticing most of the group weren't, wasn't noticing it. I was noticing it. And I was getting distracted. That's the first level, is that most people don't even, are even aware of someone else's suffering. And that doesn't make them bad. It's simply where they are at in their practice of fierce compassion and presence and awareness. And I'm not saying I'm special, but it's just that I... I I had, I was getting, un, I was getting uncomfortable hearing the baby cry and I was getting distracted. And, um, and I, and I, and they said, what's the matter, Joe, you're distracted. I said, I'm distracted um, because um, um, uh, because I'm getting distracted because of what, the, because of hearing this child and like, oh, I didn't even hear that. And I, and then suddenly everyone was hearing it. And, and I also noticed there was one young woman in the group who um, was also getting distracted. And, and, I, and then the, baby, the child stopped for a while and then started again. And I was continuing with my teaching and, and I was trying to do the teaching. And she, this other woman, stood up, burst into tears and ran out of the room to, see, to basically, and, and that's all we knew. She, ran, she burst into tears, ran out of the room. And then she came back in a few minutes to say that the child was okay everything was okay. That to me is the highest level of compassion in action where she could not do anything but stand up 
and run out and see what was happening. So I wanna just, and I'm not saying we all have to do that now, but I just wanna give a reference point of what we can cultivate with this open-heartedness, this sense of, of compassion and action, and why it's so important, the part of the practice we do around opening our hearts to and connecting with strangers. Um, because it, as we do that, we begin to um, not just see what's happening in the world as statistics. We actually can actually maybe see, get into the first phase of this is, this is not working for me. I don't, I don't think this should be happening. What can I do? And even that question is enough. That's already a shift. If more people on this planet just did that, things would shift. And then you never know what your creativity can bring in terms of things to do. You never know what, uh, what, what, what situations can arise. And, and those are discussions you can be having with friends and colleagues where we can do that with each other is I, I want, I'm feeling compelled, I'm feeling compassion and action, but I don't know what to do. What can we do? And I can list a number of ways right now that there are communities and, and groups of people and systems that are, that are suffering deeply. And, uh, and, and what can we do to support that? So I want to leave it at that. Remember, if you're thinking about it, make you do, think about my request. And let's do our practice. Let's take this into, um, into our practice as we're going. So uh, for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. This is a practice that I've developed from the methodology I just mentioned, uh, the respectful confrontation methodology based on the core practice. It's a variation on that to bring it more into a global perspective and, and, and um, for lasting peace. And um, the way uh, we would do that is like in most meditations, but I'm just gonna say it, uh, is to be able to sit in a way, what I'm now calling the power sit, as opposed to the power stance. Uh, the power sit where you're sitting on whatever you're sitting on, whether it's a cushion or a chair, that you're sitting with your spine straight. Since this practice is teaching us to cultivate from grounding and flexibility a deeper level of balance and flow, even in our meditation, we want to release as much rigidity as we can. We want to allow the, 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 nerve system, the nervous system through the spine and, and all of the meridians, whatever system you believe in, to flow freely. We don't want to contract it. So by sitting in a, in, with your spine straight, without rigidity helps create a channel for energy to flow more freely, to create flow. So sitting in a way where your spine is straight, your belly is relaxed, your jaw is relaxed, you're, you're elongating your spine from the back of your neck so that your, um, your jaw is relaxed and, and, and you're tucking your chin in a little bit, your shoulders are relaxed, the, arm, the hands are just resting. And remembering that there's no right way to do this or wrong way to do it. It's simply um, about finding your way. <clears throat> so bringing your attention to your center, which is in your lower belly, approximately the width of three fingers below your navel and a third of the way into the body. So if, you, if you're new to this or if you don't really know from a cognitive level where that is, putting your fingers together uh, if you put your fingers together and place your index finger over your navel, and where your pinky resides, that's approximately the width of three fingers below your navel. So bringing your attention to that spot, the width of three fingers below your navel, now bringing your attention inside of your body about a third of the way. And that's, this is what I would call your center, focusing on that spot, the width of three fingers below your navel, a third of the way into the body. This is what I would call your center, your core. Center of gravity, impulse, creativity where I would say your personal power resides. That's your center of awareness. It's the part of you that perceives your reality 
and to cultivate a deeper level of awareness and presence and connection. The more you can cultivate perceiving your reality, becoming aware of your reality, as opposed to feeling your reality or thinking your reality, the more you can come into balance and flow in your personal power. Taking a deep breath into your center. Feeling the parts of your body that are connecting with what you're sitting on. Might be a chair, a cushion, a floor. Using those points as your anchor, as points, as your contact points. From those points, feeling the pressure that your body is making with the floor or the chair, and seeing if you can yield and let yourself be held from that point, dropping in, letting gravity bring you closer to the ground. From your center, become aware of your physical body the first step of this exercise is in bringing a deeper awareness and deeper listening to yourself and connection, relationship with yourself in this present moment, beginning with your physical body. Simply listen, let your body speak to you. It's always speaking to you through sensation, through the rhythm of your heart, the rhythm of your breath, tension, release. Learn its language. And there's deep, deep wisdom in it. Allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. All feelings are welcome. And from your center, become aware of your emotional body. What emotions are you present to now? The more you can cultivate a dialogue, a relationship with your emotional body, the more you can work with it and it can work with you. Allowing those emotions to flow, which is all what they want to do. Allowing yourself to feel what you're feeling. And from your center, become aware of your thoughts. Not focusing on how are your, what are your thoughts, but how are they? Just checking in, assessing. Are they tight and judgmental? Are they spacious and generous? and really acknowledging the part of you that is aware of your thoughts. And from your center, keeping that as the foundation of your practice, of this practice, and now bringing awareness to your heart or the middle of your chest where your heart power resides. Compassion, respect, Dignity, understanding, connection. And now take a moment from your center and from your heart to become aware of that part of you that may connect with something larger than yourself. From your center and from your heart, becoming aware of that part of you that may have a connection with something larger than yourself. And notice. And from that part of you, just check in. Do you feel a connection with something larger than yourself at this moment? What does that even mean? And if you do, what's the quality of that connection? Now that something larger than yourself might be something spiritual. It might be humanity. It might be your highest values. So checking in from your center and from your heart in this moment, 
if you're sensing a connection with something larger than yourself. Now with more of an awareness of yourself, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, from your center and from your heart, take a full breath in, in through your nose, and out through your mouth, allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. Now with more of an awareness of yourself in this present moment, from your center and from your heart, keeping your eyes closed, become aware of your surroundings, building relationship with your surroundings in this present moment. And what are you noticing from all directions? For instance, behind you, above you, sounds, smells. Are you noticing with this current time of social distancing more silence, perhaps? And how might your surroundings be influencing you at this moment? Allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. From your center and from your heart with more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings in this present moment, take a deep breath in, in through your nose and out through your mouth. And with more of an awareness of yourself and your surroundings in this present moment, from your center and from your heart, becoming aware of those in this meditation circle. Keeping your eyes closed, just trusting that just with your presence and awareness that you can be having an impact on someone and that they may be having an impact on you. What is it like to reach out to someone from your center and your heart? And you're reaching out this moment and creating a, a meditation circle with people from various parts of North America various parts of Europe and perhaps other parts of the world. Expanding your awareness. And from your center and from your heart, with more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, and those in this meditation circle, take a full breath in, in through your nose, and out through your mouth. We build our capacity of awareness and connection as we maintain a connection with ourself, our surroundings, and those in this meditation circle. From your center and from your heart, becoming aware of all human beings, first beginning with those human beings that you would label loved ones, those you know, those close by, friends, family, teachers, You may see a face, you may see faces, you may see groups of people from your center and from your heart, opening your awareness to those that you would call loved ones. And how might you be influencing them at this moment? And from your center and from your heart, becoming aware of those human beings that you might label as stranger. Considering that there are, might be billions of them, what's your scope of awareness of the number of strangers that you can connect with at this moment in your heart? You might see faces, someone on the news, someone at the grocery store, with a mask, of course. You might see groups of people. What's arising in your heart? And how might you be influencing them at this moment?
allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. And from your center and from your heart, becoming aware of those human beings that you label as adversary. And without judgment, simply noticing who arises. You might see specific faces, you might see groups of people. And what's your capacity at this moment from your center and from your heart to become aware of them, connect with them? Allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. Now with more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, those in this meditation circle and all human beings, regardless of how you label them as loved one, stranger or adversary, deep, deep in your heart and in your center, take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. And take a moment to notice the effects of, of the practice so far? Are you noticing an expansion in your heart, in your whole system? A shift in your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, or your physical body, or your spiritual body? And see if you can maintain that level of expansion, if you're experiencing that, of holding all human beings in your heart. And taking all those all human beings in your heart as we now narrow our focus of awareness. So taking all human beings in your heart as we now bring our focus back to from our center and from our heart to those in this meditation circle. Bringing all the human family with us as we connect in circle. What wishes might you have that we collectively can hold? Let that arise in your heart. What dreams do you have for human beings? What's possible? We're holding this together as a community, as a meditation circle. And now bringing all of those in this meditation circle into your heart as you narrow your focus back to your surroundings. What is it like to hold that in your heart? All human beings, all those in this meditation circle as you bring your awareness back to your surroundings. Um, has your awareness and connection with your surroundings maybe shifted? Allowing energy to flow and emotions to flow. And bringing the whole human family in your heart, those in this meditation circle and your surroundings back into yourself, back to yourself, bringing it into your heart and into your core. Imagining if both your core and your heart were like a battery. And use this time now, if, if that feels right for you, to fill yourself up with the practice you've done with the efforts of this, that expansion in your heart, integrating that into who you are, energizing you, empowering you. Feeling your core and your heart. And now with more of an awareness of yourself, your surroundings, those in this meditation circle, bringing that all into you, back to yourself, remembering that you too are one of those human beings that you've taken into your heart. From your center and from your heart, take a deep breath in to close this practice. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Taking a moment to just register this. Let your nervous system remember this. Muscle memory. New neural pathways taking it into your cells, taking it into your organs, energizing you. 
And when you're ready, open your eyes. And you might want to do a little shaking. Shake your hands a little bit. Shake your body. Shake your head. Shake your jaw. Shake out your feet. Shake your pelvis. Get the whole body moving, releasing any excess tensions that you might have or oh, just letting go. Coming back to stillness. So that was our practice. Now I'd like to open it up. If anyone feels that they want to share anything, what's on your heart, any things based on the things that I was talking about, based on the practice, things that are up for you at the moment, you can type it in the chat, but it's nice to hear voices. So if you don't mind, unmute yourself and um, briefly share what's going on, or what your thoughts are. Good morning, everyone. Um, actually, Joe, the one thing I think that was sort of this loud, booming thing that clicked in my head after you said it was right at the very end when you said um, the idea of what's possible. And for whatever reason, it like reverberated through me uh, because I I think it's right now we all feel so overwhelmed in many ways and lack of control which is so unnerving and so terrifying and the future is so unknown from day to day and yet the idea of what's possible was somehow reassuring to me because it gives me a feeling of potential action on my part because it is not written in stone and we can actually fully participate in that and for whatever reason, that really literally just shook through me this morning and gives me a sense of deep and profound power that action can actually define what could be possible. So thank you for that. Thanks, Trish. Anyone have any thoughts on that? <clears throat> So I have a slightly different thought. Um, what came to me in this practice was uh, a sense of gratitude because I thought back to previous pandemics, plagues around the world hundreds, thousands of years ago, maybe, I don't know. And just the gratitude uh, that I felt for our ability through this technology to be together. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's, I call it the World Wide Web. I still hold on to that phrase because we use this as a web. We, you know, it has its disadvantages and it does have its advantages and we can make use of that. Thank you, Jean. There's a request to say your name when you share. <clears throat> so if you, if you don't mind doing that, if you don't, don't do it if you don't feel comfortable doing it, but if you don't mind doing that, share your name. Hi, this is Shelley. Um, when Trish said something about, and um, uh, it's not verbatim, but to the effect of that we don't know from day to day um, the sense of, of not knowing, the thing that came to me is, and I've been, I've been very aware of how much I'm able to be in the moment and enjoy it, which is so not me. Uh, it's, it's been a, a desire of my whole life, but I've never been able to achieve it and I have it now. And what, what came to me when, when Trish said that about knowing or not knowing rather, is that my experience is that it's not that I don't know now. I never know. I'm just aware of it. I always had the false assumption that I know and I can control and I can power my way through whatever. And I think what's new for me is the awareness and the ability to be okay with, I just don't know and I'll take it as it unfolds. So yeah, yeah. that's my takeaway. I hope I can keep it a month or a year from now. Let's, 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 let's all, yeah, put that in your dedication. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you. Thanks, Shelley. Hi, good morning, it's Keith. Um, Hi, what Keith. comes up for me, what came up for me in this is, uh, uh, I went to, oh gee, you know, when, what will it be like um, when we begin to open things up and return to, to normal? And I don't want that. I don't want to return to what we had. And the other thought is, wouldn't, what would it be like if we were able to give ourselves permission as humanity to, to plan for a two or three week timeout for everybody globally? Just a thought. To actually plan for that, where we, we all stock up and are, are able to take a global timeout, vacation, um, time for quietness together. Yeah. Again, aspirations. Thank you. Yeah, Keith. That's great. Yeah. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> Is someone, I'm not sure if someone's speaking, you, you might be muted if there was someone who was speaking. Todd's saying, um, I read yesterday, we should start asking the question, when will we bounce forward rather than when will we bounce back? Yeah. That's, and then and I, and I think, um, I think uh, that that's that's, that's uh, just to add to that. That's what what I was saying. You know, from this, like, what do we hold in our hearts as a possibility that we can hold space for that? You know, what 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 we're holding space for, at least I am, is this idea of a, of a world that can manifest lasting peace. Um, and you know, and so the idea, which means, it bouncing back. If we want to go back to the old, it's the old that was. We, those those, those are the causes we don't don't want to initially go back to. It's we've got to create new causes, and that's what we're doing here. We're in this wonderful liminal period, this this in between space where we can use that time to create new causes for what what's for the next steps and the next phase. So I like that bouncing forward. It doesn't feel like a struggle. It feels like it's just like a you're on a trampoline and it's just a big old leap into the new. Um, good morning. This is Ken from uh, Washington, D.C. Um, I'm hearing uh, a lot of the, the action and the call to action, which I've I've been hearing in different ways and also experiencing a wave of kind of anger and depression. Um, I think sort of my second big round um, and they don't feel polarized or, you know, in conflict with each other. I think they're, they're both happening, but it's reminding me of the OODA loop and observing, orienting, deciding, and then acting. I think um, I've been preparing and making little actions, but wanting to make bigger action. And as people were going along and speaking, that sense of moving forward. Um, and thank you, Joe. I felt like the, the opening and the meditation today were just uh, really, really powerful for me and really um, compelling, very grounding and very, very compelling. But I was remembering, um, similar to what people are saying, that um, there was a time when we stopped calling our organizational retreats retreats and started calling them advances. And it was a mental shift, but it really was, you know, the idea of going back and um, wasn't really what we were doing at all. So that language was really important. So I think this idea of advancing um, and taking moments to decide and act, um, it's landing really, really powerfully today. So thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Ken. Thank you.
Anyone else? Any last words on what you've been hearing or anything that's coming up for you? Okay. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm grateful. As I always say, I'm grateful for all that you bring to this. Um, don't forget the request. If you like, if you like the idea, don't forget it. I don't know if you did everybody, was everybody there for when I was talking about it? I'll just say really quickly. Um, I'm making a little note that I'm sticking in my mailbox for the postal worker, just to let them know how much I appreciate them and that they are appreciated and wishing them well. Um, so as always, we started with a motivation. We did our practice. We had a chance to reflect and now we'll end with a dedication. So in your hearts for yourself, all this, I always say it's, it's, a, it's a statistical miracle that these 30 people or so come together of all the seven and a half billion on the planet that we've come together, random people. It's statistically impossible that this happens. So the fact that just that makes it a miracle to me that there's something significant happening as when we gather. So let's take that idea that we've generated something beneficial for the planet and for all beings and take a moment to just direct it now. So for yourself and your own hearts, just quickly for yourself, maybe you could use some of that energy right now if you're struggling or challenged. People you know, um, the continued restoration of the planet at the moment on some level. And of course, to our, uh, the one, those on the front lines, which is the expression that's used for healthcare workers, grocery store workers, postal workers, all those people who are making sure that we can maintain this practice we're all in, in a sense, taking risks for themselves, for all of us. And as always, may all beings on this planet have enough food to eat and fresh water to drink. And may all governments govern from a place of wisdom as opposed to fear and greed. So have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Remember, we are gathering on Friday at exactly the same time. Um, and if you can think of people who you would like to um, invite, particularly people from different countries, it's always fun to get some new countries uh, to join us, to represent us. Think about that and um, be well. And if there's anything you need to reach out with, get in touch. Um, you can reach us through respectfulconfrontation.com. Take care. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye, Joe. Thank you. Be well, everyone. Stay.